Hey guys, it's Tori and I'm here right now with Sharp Tooth. How's it going you guys? Pretty good, how are you? I'm fantastic. I can't believe this is our first like formal interview we've done. I feel like the pit vlogs yeah, so. don't count. No, it's our first time really. actually sitting. <laughs> I know, it's like right before you go on stage we're all freaking out. It's like, but... oh god, we're gonna play! Uh, bye! <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was the hometown show too that I caught oh, up with you guys, yeah. which was just a hot mess. <laughs> So now we're here, things are chill, we're off Warp Tour, we're in Orlando. You're on tour with As It Is right now. Yes. Which is, first of all, a very unsuspecting mix, but I, very cool. It's been the best. Yeah. It has been probably my favorite club tour that we've ever done. Ooh, that's as far amazing. as getting to combine two worlds that aren't often combined enough exactly. and uh, getting to meet all of As It Is His fans who, like, it's pretty much like 70% like young women yeah. has been absolutely incredible. Yeah, definitely a target demographic for the message and really cool that you're able to explore so many different kinds of music in one show. That's what I was saying to Hold Close. I was like, for anyone who's not exposed to heavier music or something like that, yeah. they're seeing everything all at once. So it's really cool. I think As It Is is also pretty aware of you know, issues that are going on as well. I mean, yeah, yeah. Definitely. No, that is that is the reason they asked yeah. us to be on this yeah, tour. Yeah, their message on their album as well definitely goes hand in hand with what you guys are trying to do. Yeah. You'd think coming from genres like punk and hardcore that that wouldn't be yeah. that outlandish, but <laughs> you know, in twenty surprise, in twenty nineteen, all anyone cares about is money in their pockets. So <laughs> God forbid yeah. they do anything that might like put some people off. No, I, know. I mean, it's definitely, I understand how music is a business at the end of the day, sure. and you guys are trying to make a living off of it, but to an extent, you still have to have integrity in what you do, so. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that one of the, the most important things about this band was that it, and I think one of the downfalls of a lot of other bands is that none of us, at least for me, I never went into making any of this music with the intention of getting big or making it. Mm -hmm. We just made this music because it was yeah. the music we wanted to make and the stuff that we wanted to get to play. <laughs> yeah. And I think that there's yeah. so many bands who go into this industry thinking the thinking that the goal is to get big or be famous. Yeah. And I think if that's your goal, you're entirely missing the point and your art yeah. loses so much of its meaning. Yeah, and the thing is fans are smart. They can see right through that. Well, yeah. They know, <laughs> they know when a band is putting on a gimmick. The, the plan was never really to do more than like some regional DIY tours and stuff like that. So like, the fact that we're even here doing this right now is like pretty crazy, and yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's really awesome that we're able to spread outside of just like our local scene to like talk about the things that we've been talking about since the band started. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that we've already had such a great conversation. I haven't even asked a single question that's on my paper yet. So with that being said, <laughs> I have a few finish the question, finish the sentence questions for you guys to start off. So the first one here is the best thing about touring with As It Is is. It's kind of like what I said before that that As It Is is so conscientious of what their band means to their fans right. and the potential impact that us as a band could have on their fans mm -hmm. and that connection. The fact that they were so incredibly aware of that and really wanted to foster that and just the fact that they're just incredibly mindful, professional, kind, deliberate, caring people yeah. um, is really, really wonderful. And the next one here is the most played song in your music library right now is... Easy Mode, Wow by Post Malone, for sure. <laughs> yes. Architects. Yeah. Really? I'm listening to a lot. I actually was just listening to them today, too. Good pick. I don't know. I've, oh, disco! <laughs> I've been listening to nothing but disco. I've been listening to so much disco, and... The Bee Gees. Uh, the Bee Gees, the Bee Gees had, like, a big moment. Uh, yeah. That's the last what? thing I expected you I'm to say. I'm full of that. surprises. Well, I've surprises. been listening to a lot of Michael Jackson recently, oh, actually. Oh, yeah. So, cool. yeah. Yeah. Yesterday I respect was, that. Uh, and then today has been all Taylor Swift, so <laughs> I'm literally all Diversity over the place. is key. Yes. Sure. Yes. <laughs> and uh, one thing you want new fans to know about the band is? Uh, that we are that we are here for them, regardless of who they are or how they identify or their place in the world. Like, that Sharp Tooth is a, is a band that is for you. Even if you haven't listened to metal or hardcore before, it doesn't yeah. mean that we're out of your realm by any stretch. Let us be your gateway band. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, I absolutely. love that. Everyone's got to have that one. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, and there's... I think there's absolutely no shame in that. Like, I think there's something incredibly powerful about being able to bring people into a genre that might have otherwise seemed like prohibitive to them. Yeah. That's one of the things that I think is so cool about bands like Not Loose, is yeah, that they sure. brought so many new kids into hardcore, into metalcore. Yeah. So, yeah. 100%. 
And last finish the sentence here, you started playing music because... <laughs> the movie School of Rock, actually. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Straight up. And skateboarding, I guess. Some of those two things. Word. Uh, I got into it, like, my grandfather played in a lot of bands when I was a kid, and I watched that happen, and I first, like, put my hands on an instrument. I was kind of, like, having a really hard time in my life at that point, and then it was just like, whoa, this is the most crazy form of expression I've ever experienced, and just went headfirst into all of it. I mean, my, my intro to music was through, like, like, chorus and singing and doing musical theater, mm -hmm. and like vocal performance on like the the classical end of things but like heavier stuff like more alternative stuff was what yeah. I listened to so did you just like, go into choir one day screaming no god no <laughs> how did that happen <laughs> um I would be spending like three or four hours at, out of my day singing but like I mean, it's kind of like when you're on tour playing heavy music every day, you don't necessarily want to listen to the same yeah. stuff that you're performing every day. So For like sure. the the stuff that I found a lot of emotional expression in was like heavy music. Yeah. So I just started trying to imitate the sounds of those bands like in my car by myself. Mm -hmm. um, and now here you are. Yeah, and now here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And speaking of where you're at right now, Clever Girl is the album that's out now. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like this album is just very personal across the board, a pretty intense album, especially lyrically. So which song was the most challenging for you guys to complete and why? No Sanctuary. I think yeah. because I had a very specific idea of what I wanted to say and the idea that I wanted to get across through the song, but there's also, I, I definitely felt a ton of pressure like as a woman talking about very nuanced topics in music, right. um, not being misinterpreted or misunderstood, exactly. um, which I like wonder, I'm like, do guys worry? Is that a thing that guys worry about as much too? Because I just, I know that anything that I do is gonna be put under a microscope and picked yeah. apart. Yeah. So I have to be very careful about how I do it. Yeah. And. Um, it's definitely pretty ballsy to talk about a lot of the things that you are on this album. I appreciate that. Yeah. This album and the, the stuff that we've been writing now new, I've been working on becoming a lot more comfortable with ambiguity in mm -hmm. what I'm saying. And that, like, I can do that for me. Like, I don't, like, I don't know that I necessarily have to prove anything to anybody yeah. um, with this next record either. It's like, you can, you can take what you want from it or yeah. you fucking don't. And, it's crazy because that's, that's already the energy. <laughs> that's already the energy I get from you guys with Clever Girl. So the fact that it's gonna be up the notch on oh, the next yeah. one, oh, I'm oh, ready. Yeah. Oh yeah, maximum yeah. sass. Um, and on this album, though, you are addressing a lot of issues um, that can make people feel marginalized or voiceless or mm -hmm. threatened in society. And so there are a lot of serious topics here. Absolutely. So when people listen to the album, what kind of action are you hoping that they will take following that experience? That's a really good question, and I feel like it depends on the person. I feel like if yeah. it is somebody who has felt marginalized and who has felt voiceless, um, I hope that this record makes them feel seen right. and heard and validated, and like they they do have a place in this world, and that they don't, you know, do no harm but take no shit. Like that yeah. they have absolutely every right to be as unapologetically them as they can be. Right. And then for people who you know, they might not have had those specific experiences, mm -hmm. but are listening to it. Um, I hope that they feel compelled and feel empowered to go out into their community and right. yeah. and raise their voices and speak up yeah. for other marginalized folks. Yeah, because definitely help those people feel more welcomed yes, in the spaces exactly. that they're in. Even if it's yeah. just reaching out to somebody at a show who looks a little bit uncomfortable and just like striking up a conversation and like having a good time. Like making a friend. Like making, that's something yeah. that I think I've noticed it's like so recently underrated. our fans are like kind of meeting and becoming friends and I just yeah. think that's so cool and uh, the community that's starting to like kind of form around it and yeah. it's just so open and welcoming and I think that's like if anything I think that's the coolest part to see from yeah. my perspective yeah and especially in like heavy music there's historically just been so much fucking elitism mm -hmm. in that and I'm hoping that the community that we are building through our music is doing away with 
a lot of that mm -hmm. surface bullshit. Yeah, and I, I mean, I kind of feel like we've touched on this a little bit, but I want to see if there's anything else you want to add to this. Um, is that in the music scene, in the music industry, sexism and homophobia are two things that are still pretty prevalent, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. And your song No Sanctuary does kind of discuss that there needs to be a safe space for everyone. Absolutely. And so what do you think fans, especially that are coming out to these upcoming shows, can do to make sure that everyone has that sanctuary, that safe space when they come to a concert. Oh, that's great. Um, I mean, you said making friends, which absolutely making, is an yeah. underrated thing. I think a huge but part, and like, this is like a theme in hardcore across the board, is just like, take care of each other. Like, yeah. yes. you look at a hardcore show from the outside and it can look very scary and violent, but like, once you get to know what's actually happening, yeah. everyone is being super careful and like taking care of each other. If anybody yeah. falls, they're back up immediately. I yeah. think just like having awareness of the people around you and what's going on is so huge. And just it like is. wanting to make sure that the people that are around you are safe and having a good time yeah. is just like mm -hmm. hugely important and, and will make every show infinitely better. Yeah. And just, yeah, and respecting everybody's way of existing. Yeah. One of the, yeah. the things that I have loved so much about this tour is that like there's clearly a lot of the as it is fans are like die hard as it is fans go to like every as it is show and a lot of these people have no experience with heavy music or with right. our band but then we're also getting a lot of people coming to the shows who are clearly sharp tooth fans who are mm. coming from the metalcore scene or the hardcore scene and the most wonderful thing that I've noticed is that at so many of these shows like our like long time like fans from hardcore and metalcore have been making an effort to a they'll like there will be a pit but they will make sure that it's not hurting any any of these yeah. younger kids that's the most important and they will make sure yeah, that like it's not like the kids in the front row aren't getting hit in the back of the head it's like yeah, the, the pit's exactly. usually a little further back than like in the crowd than what we're used to i guess but like you can tell that's like where it can exist safely and like everyone else is still having a great time yeah. watching in the front because like a lot of kids have never seen us, so they just want to watch. And right. Yeah, and they don't they don't know what a yeah. fucking hardcore show is right. like, so they don't want like, like That's like Joe beautiful. hardcore stage yeah. diving onto their face and stepping on their mouth. And like the 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 people who have been like coming to see us for a while have been so wonderful and respectful mm -hmm. of that and it's just been that's really warmed my heart and i'm like that to me is so much about what hardcore is about is is taking care of each other and yeah. like ingratiating the new people and yeah. making them feel welcome it's so cool to look yeah. out yeah. like you can tell like a lot of these kids, like it's the first time in a mosh pit or like first time stage it's diving. Really great. And, like, it's really great. I know. It's tight. like it's like I get like emotional about it. <laughs> That's such a beautiful dynamic, though, that those hardcore kids aren't like trying to flex on other people. Like, look right? how hardcore I am. And like that just makes me know? proud of my fans because Absolutely. like there That's are great. a lot of fucking chuds in hardcore who <laughs> they, they yeah, of course they do it so, so many quick fucking being like that yeah don't it's fucking lame <laughs> you're a giant fucking dork <laughs> no one cares about your nikes uh, wow. <laughs> big mood right <laughs> there folks <laughs> yeah it's like like just be kind to hot each other yeah hot Cash. takes from lauren cash <laughs> and uh be hot compassionate <laughs> yeah i know right yeah, and we have spent a lot of time here kind of discussing the message of your music, but do you guys feel a sense of responsibility to speak out about issues in society? And what are your thoughts on other artists that maybe don't use their platform for that kind of thing? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and it's, I literally say this every night that, you know, some people might say that I talk too much, but until I'm not the only woman on every one of these fucking stages, I'm just gonna have to keep fucking talking. <laughs> and if anyone has a problem with it, I hope that their course of action is to go out into their community and create spaces for marginalized people, create platforms for people who have not had a voice before, because then I won't have anything else to fucking talk about. <laughs> Just go there fix, fix the fucking world shut and I'll Mike. shut up. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Actually, Please. That's, that's I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sums that up real quick. I there we go. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, you are on this tour with As It Is, as we've been talking about. What are the plans for after this that fans can look forward to? I know you mentioned new music in the works. What else can we look forward to? Yeah. We're recording as soon as we get back Hell yeah. uh, for about like two months with a really cool guy, Brian McTernan. He's loved us. Yeah. And we're recording with them, and then immediately after that, we go to Europe. Yeah, come back, kid. No big deal. Favorite. Yeah, no big no. deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so exciting. I can't wait to hear the new stuff from you guys, and have the best time in Europe as oh, well. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank you, and everybody watching, make sure you check out Sharp Tooth if you haven't already. Subscribe for more videos, and we'll catch you later. Deuces. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>